consider the particle in a box in one dimensions. We will consider only the x-axis and when x is equal to 0 the value of wave function psi equal to 0 and when x is equal to L the value of wave function psi is equal to 0. x is equal to 0 and x is equal to L are the boundaries of the particle in a box one dimension. Since the particle cannot be found in the boundaries, the value of wave function psi equal to 0 at x is equal to 0, and the value of psi is equal to 0 at x is equal to L, and these two conditions are known as the boundary conditions for the particle in a box in one dimension. In between the two boundaries, the particle keeps moving, and the particle can be found in between, and so the value of the wave function is not equal to 0. Since the particle is moving, it will have only kinetic energy and the value of potential energy is zero. Since the particle is moving, the value of potential energy of a moving particle is zero. The total energy will be the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy. The potential energy is zero and the kinetic energy will be equal to half mv square. And so the total energy will be equal to mv square by two. Consider the expression for total energy mv square by two. Multiply the numerator and denominator by m and we'll get m square v square by 2m which is mv the whole square by 2m. The product of mass and velocity is known as linear momentum and uh, the value of symbol for linear momentum is p. Substitute this in the equation 1 and we'll get the total energy equal to p square by 2m. mv the whole square by 2m is equal to p square by 2m. This is equation 3. Now we will be considering about the quantum mechanical operator for total energy which is known as Hamiltonian operator. This is a h hat. And p square hat by 2m or p hat square by 2m. The operator for linear momentum is h by 2 pi i d by dx. p square will be equal to h square by 4 pi square i square d square by ds square. i square will be equal to minus 1. And if we substitute this, we will get p square is equal p square hat is equal to minus a square by 4 pi square d square by d square. Substitute equation 8 in equation 4 and we will get Hamiltonian operator h equal to minus a square by 8 pi square m d square by d square which is a Hamiltonian operator for a particle in a box in one dimensions. Now we will move on to the Schrodinger equation which is psi equal to e psi. Substitute the value of Hamiltonian operator given by the equation 9 that is minus a square by 8 pi square m d square by d square in the Schrodinger equation and we get minus a square by 8 pi square m d square psi by d square equal to e psi. Rearrange this equation. Take the terms other than d square by psi by d square. That is the coefficient of the term d square psi by d square which is minus a square by 8 pi square m to the right side. And we will get d square psi by d square is equal to minus h pi square m by h square e psi. Now take the whole of the term on the right hand side to the left hand side and so the negative term becomes positive term and the right hand side becomes zero and we get d square psi by d square plus 8 pi square m by h square e psi equal to zero. Now let us assume 8 pi square m by h square into e as k square that is all the other and we get d square psi by d square plus k square psi equal to 0. Now, if we solve this equation, a d square psi by d square plus k square psi equal to 0, which is in a standard form, 
psi is equal to a sin kx plus b cos kx which is the solution for the differential equation d square psi by d square plus k square psi equal to 0 where a and b are constant. Then we have to find out the values of the two constants a and b using the two boundary conditions. First we will consider the boundary condition given in the first slide which is when x is equal to 0 psi is equal to 0 which is that when x is equal to 0 psi is equal to 0 and psi is 0 and x is also 0 and we will get a sin 0 plus b cos 0 is equal to 0 sin 0 is 0 and cos 0 is 1 and so we will get b is equal to 0 and when we substitute b is equal to 0 in equation 16 we will get psi is equal to b is equal to 0 in equation 16 we will get psi is equal to a sin kx psi is equal to a sin kx the next thing we will do is apply boundary condition 2 which we see here in the first slide when x is equal to l psi is equal to 0 this is boundary condition 2 and we consider the boundary condition 2 then we will get psi is equal to 0 when x is equal to l and so 0 is equal to a sin kl. This is true when kl is equal to n pi where n can take values from 0, 1, 2, 3 etc. This is a stage where quantization is introduced. Quantum quantization is the condition when we have only certain values are permitted and not all the values are continuously permitted. Only when n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, kl will be equal to n pi. And when we have kl is equal to n pi, k will be equal to n pi by l. And substitute this, k is equal to n pi by l in the equation 18. In the equation 18, psi is equal to a sin kx, substitute k is equal to n pi by l and this will become a sin n pi x by l. This is equation 22. Now we have to solve the value of a. For this, we we have to do the normalization. The normalization condition is integral 0 to L psi star psi dx equal to 1. The limits or the limits of the particle in a box one dimension which is 0 at one end and L at other end. Now substitute the value of psi given by the equation 22 in 23 we will get now, rearranging this, we will get a square integral 0 to L sin square n pi x by L. Now, sin square u is given by 1 minus cos 2u by 2 and so u is equal to n pi x by L. We will get sin square n pi x by L is equal to 1 minus cos 2 pi x in 2n pi x by L by 2. Substitute 26 and 25, we get like this. Take out the constant 1 by 2 outside. Split this into two terms and we will get like this. And if you integrate this, the second term will become 0 in the first term. If you integrate it, dx will become x and applying the limit L to 0, L, L to zero we will get L minus 0 and that will be L 
and so you'll get a square by 2 into l minus 0 equal to 1 a square by 2 into l equal to 1 and a square is equal to 2 by l and a is equal to root 2 by l now substitute this substitute this equation a is equal to root 2 by l in the equation 22 which is psi is equal to a in pi x by l will get psi is equal to root 2 by l sin n pi x this is the equation for region function of a particle in a box in one dimension of course with a condition with an accompanying condition that when n is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 etc we will not get n is equal to 0 because when n is equal to 0 psi is equal to 0 and if it's sin is equal to 0 that means the particle doesn't exist so we will not have n is equal to 0 we will we'll take values from 1 2 3 etc now let us look at the graph we get by plotting psi versus x first we will consider the expression of the region function root 2 by l sin n pi x by l when n is equal to 1 when n is equal to 1 we will get root 2 by l sin n is equal to 1 and so sin pi x by l and uh, the two ends of the box are x is equal to 0 and x is equal to l and we'll find x is equal to 0 and when x is equal to 0 psi is equal to 0 and when x is equal to l psi is equal to root 2 by l sin pi l by l which is sin pi so when x is equal to l we'll have pi sin pi and when we'll have x is equal to 0 we'll have sin 0 so when we have x is equal to 0 sin 0 is equal to 0 when x is equal to pi sin pi equal to 0 and so when x is equal to 0 psi is 0 and when x is equal to l sin is 0 and in between 0 and pi will get pi by 2 and when x is equal to pi by 2 sin pi by 2 is sin 90 which is a positive value and when we have the psi square term since all the terms are positive here psi square is also positive now consider when n is equal to 2 we will have 2 pi x by l two ends of the box are x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 we will get psi equal to sin 0 which is 0 when x is equal to l that is the other end we will get psi is equal to root 2 by l sin 2 pi l by l which is sin 2 pi sin 2 pi is also 0 and so when x is equal to 0, psi equal to 0. When x is equal to L, psi equal to 0. This is sin 0. This is sin 2 pi. And this is sin pi. Sin pi is also 0. This is sin 0. This is sin pi. So this is sin pi by 2, which is a positive value. This is sin pi. This is 2 pi, sin 2 pi. This is sin 3 pi by 2, that is sin 270 degrees centigrade, which is a negative value. When we take the square of the wave function, the square of the positive term is positive term. The square of the negative term is also positive term. And all the terms are positive terms. Similarly, for psi equal to 3, we will get like this. In this, when x is equal to 0, 
psi equal to 0 when x is equal to L we will get sin 3 pi which is also 0 so this end is x is equal to 0 this end is when x is equal to L this is sin 0 this is sin 3 pi this is sin pi this is sin 2 pi all these are 0 when on squaring the positive term will remain positive term the negative term will also become positive now consider the graphs in this graph here we have psi is equal to 0 and when we have psi is equal to 0 the electron density is 0 here the electron density is 0 here electron density is 0 there is no other point where the electron density is 0 and so there is no node when n is equal to 1 when n is equal to 2 we have an intermediate point where the electron density is 0 that is psi is 0 psi square is 0 and so there is one node so node is the point at which the electron density is 0 the point at which the value of psi is 0 the point at which the value of psi square is 0 so when n is equal to 2 there is one node when n is equal to 3 we will have 1 and 2 nodes 2 points at which the electron density is 0 so when n is equal to 3 2 nodes when n is equal to 2 1 node and so for n we will have n minus 1 nodes now recall that k square is equal to 8 pi square m by h square e that is what we assume at the very early stage of our derivation at the time of integration we assume that k square is equal to 8 pi square m e by h square from this now we have moved on to a stage here we recall k square is equal to 8 pi square m e by s square rearrange this equation e is equal to sorry rearrange this equation e is equal to k square h square by 8 pi square m we recall that k l is equal to n pi from this k is equal to n pi by n substituting this in the expression for e we get e is equal to n square h square by 8 m l square this is the expression for agent value of a particle in a box one dimension now in general if we assume that e n is equal to n square square by 8 m l square for n is equal to n 1 will get 1 square square by 8 m l square which is equal to a square by 8 m l square for n is equal to 2 we have 2 square square by 8 ml square which is equal to 4 square by 8 ml square for n is equal to 3 3 square square by 8 ml square which is 9 square by 8 ml square for n is equal to 4 4 square square by 8 ml square which is 16 square by 8 ml square and so on now what we find is that when n increases the value of e also increases a square by 8 ml square, 4 s square by 8 ml square, 9 s square by 8 ml square and so on. So when n increases, e increases. Now we will consider the difference between two successive levels e2 and e1. e2 is 4 s square by 8 ml square, e1 is s square by 8 ml square, the difference is 3 s square by 8 ml square. The difference between the next two levels will be 9 square by 8 ml square minus 4 square by 8 ml square which is equal to 5 square by 8 ml square. The difference between the fourth and third level is 16 minus 9 which is 7 square by 8 ml square and the difference between fifth and fourth level is 9 square by 8 ml square. What we see is that when n increases the spacing also increases. This is 3 square, this is 5 square this is 7 square, this is 9 square by 8 ml square and so we find that the energy levels are not equally spaced. Here we find the energy level diagram, we 
we have plotted the various energy levels we have calculated earlier for E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, etc. and we find that E1 and E2 are closer. E2 and E3, the spacing is still higher. E3 and E4 are much apart. And E4 and E5, the spacing is even higher. What we find is that when N increases, the spacing between the energy level increases. The spacing is not uniform. Thank you.